Hey guys, Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. I want to get right to the point. Plastic regulators are good. Well, you know, there's no reason why not. I, I get, and the reason for this quick little video is that I get a lot of divers making comments, or older divers, which is funny coming from me, I've been diving for 60 years, uh, calling me and saying, you know, I don't like those new plastic regulators. You know, I want a good old solid chrome brass like I had when I was diving in the 60s or 70s. Well, number one, you can't get them. And uh, number two, the plastic ones are better. Uh, let me explain why. Let me explain some of these things. At the same time, you might enjoy some of these vintage items that I have in front of me. Okay, Kevin, here we go. This particular regulator was, was I don't think it was overly popular. Personally, I don't ever recall seeing one of these on a diver. I'm sure there were. They sold quite a few of them. But it was up for a number of years, and it was put up by U.S. divers, Aqualung, if you like. And uh, this particular regulator is called the Jet Air. Am I right? Yes, the Jet Air. <laughs> and uh, if you look at them, you'll see that they're, they're plastic. It came with three models. I have all three of them here. This was the, I think this was the first model. You know, when I say I think, I need to clarify. I am not an expert on the idiosyncrasies of various regulators. There are some of my friends who know all about Aqualung two hose regulators. They can tell you the month and year that each different model came out. They can tell you the difference between model A and model B. I can't do that. First of all, it's not something that I have a particular interest in and, and I haven't studied it. And secondly, 60 years or not, I did not use every regulator on the market. Nobody ever has. But some of my friends in the vintage uh, scuba community are real experts. So you can check it and find out. But I'm going to assume, I think, that this Jet Air came out first. And you can see that the body is plastic and it has yellow hoses. Yellow hoses are very, very common in the 50s and 60s, very, very common. And then another model is exactly the same, but it does not have the white paint on it. This, this is, a, this is a, a relatively smooth face and that white is printed on there. This is a very rough face. On this, the, the uh, information, Jet Air, Aqualung and so on, that information is actually impressed right into the plastic. So these, these came out fairly uh, early on and, and they're relatively the same. Now this regulator, same model, the Jet Air, came out a little later, and uh, it, it's it's identical, inside and out is exactly the same. It's the same impressed, it means pressed in uh, uh, letters on it, so they're raised. When you're running, run, you can hear it. Uh, however, it's wood grain. No, it's not made of wood. This is the same plastic, but somehow or other they're able to give the plastic a wood grain finish. And uh, these regulators, uh, as I said, I don't know how popular they were, but they should have been very popular because they eliminated a lot of problems that all the other regulators had, specifically related to corrosion or breakdown. It doesn't matter how much chrome you put on brass or out of the way around, it doesn't matter. Eventually, a metal regulator is going to start breaking down, even in fresh water, definitely, certainly in salt water with a lot of care very careful washing and rinsing and greasing and oiling and so on, anything made of metal will start to break down in salt water. These didn't. Sure, salt water doesn't affect plastic. So the biggest, there may be others, it's lighter, and prettier, and colorful, and so on, but the single biggest benefit to a plastic regulator, an old one like these, 50, 60 years old, or a new one that you go into the dive store and see today, the biggest benefit is very simply, they do not corrode. They do not wear down because of the salt water, the marine environment. They still should be rinsed, but if you don't rinse them for a few days, you don't destroy them. If you don't rinse a metal regulator for several days, the salt water can actually corrode the finish permanently. So that's the biggest single benefit. I wanted to show you these because plastic regulators are not new. These came out in the 50s and 60s. It's not a new idea at all. And plastic is a good idea. So you guys out there, don't be afraid to get a plastic regulator. In most cases, the parts of the plastic regulator are incredibly tough. It's like your steering wheel. Your steering wheel is made of a product called Delrin, which is a fancy name for a specific plastic. Ever try to break a steering wheel? Exactly, not fun if you do, but anyway. It's the same with regulators. You really have to abuse a regulator second stage to actually break it. Same with these. Now actually, to be perfectly honest, and here we go with a complete honesty, these are not plastic. These regulators you're looking at right here are actually made of a product called Bakelite. Now you may not remember Bakelite if you're not 
oh, I would say 50 years at least or older. We don't remember a Bakelite. It was a very early type of plastic, a synthetic material, Bakelite. They made, oh, radios out of Bakelite. They made uh, all kinds of plastic things that had to be a special shape because the Bakelite could be molded, you see. Unlike metal, it had to be forged or treated. The Bakelite could be molded just as any plastic can be. There was a downside to Bakelite, pure Bakelite like these and Bakelite radios, and early transistor radios and all those various products that were made from Bakelite. There was one problem. It was an early form of plastic. It had the good qualities of plastic. It didn't corrode. You could mold it and add color and so on. But it had one bad property that modern plastics do not have. It was not tough. If you take one of these regulators and you drop it onto a cement floor or a stone floor, it'll shatter. That's right. Bakelite was not good in that way. It would actually crack and shatter into a dozen pieces if you hit it hard enough. So this is an, these are early plastic regulators, but they're still plastic, still have the benefits. Now, if you think it's only this one company, let me correct you. This is another big company. You don't remember this company. Not likely. This company has been out of business now for a number of years. But here's another very, very popular, and if I may as well as tell you, is a very valuable regulator. These regulators uh, are, are worth quite a bit of money. I won't talk dollars. But this is a Voigt 50 Fathom. In fact, specifically, it says on the front, Blue 50 Fathom. Now, divers are not, by nature, stupid. I don't know why they put the blue on there, because if anybody said, what color is your regulator? I would almost certainly say blue. But anyway, Voigt felt compelled to put the word blue in there. This is a blue 50 fathom. To, not to be confused with the other 50 fathoms were, were different colors. There weren't any. Uh, anyway, so this is, but this is a pure plastic. This is real plastic. This is not Bakelite. This is a later type of plastic. It's like, much like the plastic we have today. And so it has all the characteristics of plastic. Won't corrode. Lighter. Different colors. Different shapes. And this one is like plastic today, is much tougher than the earlier Bakelite ones. So that's all. I just wanted to show you a couple of neat old regulators, okay? Take that opportunity. This is, this is vintage Cuba. But also point out to you guys that are vintage divers, meaning you've been around for a long time, that plastic is not necessarily bad. Now, I'm an old diver. I was raised on chrome, brass, heavy steel, all that kind of neat stuff too. But I like plastic regulators. My current regulator that I still use for diving, very, very small, very, very lightweight, no weight at all, goes in my mouth. I don't even know it's there, and of course, it's plastic. So there you go. Plastic regulators, good. And there's a couple of old vengeance examples for you to look at. Okay, that's it. Talk to you real soon. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba.